Make your way to Mark chapter 13. The title of our message this morning is Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Now, I know many of you have been walking with Jesus for 20, 30, 40, some of you 50, some of you 60 years, and you've been hearing that Jesus is coming since, since you've been saved. And to that I say Jesus is still coming. He's still on his way, and you and I need to be ready for when Jesus does arrive. We're going to start in Mark chapter 13 at verse 24, and when you get there, give us an amen. amen. Mark chapter 13. Starting at verse 24. Actually, let's jump back to verse 19 so we can get a little flavor of where we have been. Mark chapter 13, starting at verse 19. And it says this, For in those days there will be tribulation such as not has been seen since the beginning of cre the creation of God created until this time, nor ever shall be. Unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. Then, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, he is there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed, see, I have told you all these things beforehand." And then our text today. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest parts of the earth to the farthest parts of the heaven. And the church said, amen and amen. Jesus is coming. And if you're taking some notes, our first point this morning will be, there will be signs in the sky. There will be signs in the sky. Jesus mentioned after that tribulation. That's why I wanted to read to you the previous verse of verses 19 to 23. It says, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Now, we sometimes experience uh, the, uh, the sun being dark. Maybe there's a, a huge fire or something. You might see the sun uh, appearing as, as red. There's several scriptures that refer to what we've just read. In Isaiah chapter 13, it says, for the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. So obviously when the sun no longer shines, the moon is going to be dark. Since the moon does not uh, produce any light of its own, it reflects the sun. When the sun is darkened, then obviously the moon would be light. And let me, let me give you one more before we, we move on. There's going to be a really difficult time upon the earth during this great tribulation. In Luke 21, it says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear of the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, we read this and we're going, this sounds a lot like today, men's hearts failing them from the expectations of those things that are coming. Look at our world today. What, when is the last time in human history would you have a shortage of like baby formula, right? <laughs> when was the, the, the last time when we, you look at our world and you, you see what's going on and you're, you're going, wow. Look at what's happening in our society, in our, in our culture now, and we can see that it's, it's exponentially becoming worse. We don't turn on the TV and watch the news and they say, things are getting better. Not only are things, things getting worse, but things will begin to uh, become a lot worse. Let me read to you a few uh, scriptures from the book of Revelation, and these are called the seal judgments in Revelation chapter 6. Listen to verses 13 and 14 of Revelation 6. It says, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth 
as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. It says the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And then in Revelation 8.10, it says this. It says the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of that star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. Verse 13, and I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So not only will times uh, become exponentially worse, but there are going to be some uh, heavenly uh, calamities. There's going to be um, uh, the, the, the rivers and the, the streams and the seas are going to be affected along with the sun and the mood. So one commentator said that the world will be racked with cosmic calamities. So imagine all that we are currently experiencing in our world today along with cosmic calamities. It is going to be a difficult time on the earth. Well, verse 26, it says, then they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Our next point this morning is Jesus will be seen. When Jesus returns, it's not going to be some private visitations. He's not going to say, hey, shh, don't let anybody know that I'm here. I'm just here for a few people. No, when Jesus returns, it will not be secret. Revelation chapter 1 tells us like this. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. Listen to this. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come. The who? The Almighty. Amen and amen. So most of the world who has rejected Jesus, the world who has likened Jesus to some type of uh, mythology or children's story, they are going to see Jesus for themselves. Uh, many people say, well, just, uh, just show me. Just, if I can just see it, then I'll believe it. Well, they will see it, and it will be much too late. So what happens next? Verse 27 tells us, it says, then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest parts of the earth to the farthest parts of the heavens. Now, this is very, very exciting that angels will be very much involved uh, during the great tribulation, that the angels will gather the elect from the four winds. And this four winds basically means from everywhere. So the angels are going to gather who? The elect. And who will these folks be? Well, during this tribulation, we know that there will be 144,000 uh, preachers of the gospel. They are Jewish witnesses. There's going to be their converts, which we'll read about in, in Revelation chapter 7. There's going to be the converts of the angelic preachers in Revelation chapter 14. And then one commentator said it's also going to be a gathering of the Old Testament uh, saints. They're going to come up out of their graves and they're going to be reunited with their redeemed spirits. And you can read Daniel 12, 1 through 3. Matthew 16, it says, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Maybe some of you have had relatives or someone tell you, hey, um, I had a vision that an angel came for uh, my, my deceased loved one. Well, that can be a good thing or, or a bad thing. Uh, sometimes people, uh, was at a, a uh, facilitated or a, a preached out at a funeral several months ago, and one person stood up and, and she said, um, I, I saw in a vision an, an angel come for him. And this individual rejected Jesus, uh, didn't love 
Jesus, walked away from Jesus. And, and when, when, when she said an angel came for him, in my mind I'm going, that's not always a good thing. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you why. Matthew chapter 13. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So an angel uh, coming for you, for some it could be a glorious thing. Maybe the question is, if you see an angel and you're about to die, you, may, you might want to ask, uh, ask them, hey, where are we going? <laughs> right? Don't take me anywhere. We just, I want to know where we're going first. Because you might see this angel and go, oh, glory and lights. He may say, well, you, this is the only light you're going to be seeing for a long, long time. Matthew 13, 41, it says, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. So, family, we need to be very, very careful of, of visions and angels and, and, and making it sound like... Um, if you're not a follower of Jesus and your time comes to an end and you've not called out to Jesus, um, God is not looking at our past track record. Does that make sense? That, that if, if you're a follower of Jesus and you're about to take your last breath, you should be extremely happy because you're about to go see some Jesus. But, but if you live the life of rejecting Jesus and you come to die, no matter how good of a person people stand up and say you are, you and I will never be good enough. You and I will never be good enough for God to say, you know what? You lived a moral life. Compared to God, who's good? There is no one. So we need to be really mindful of, hey, angels are coming for my loved ones. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming. You just want to make sure your loved one knows who, who Jesus is. And not only knows, but your loved one is following them them some Jesus. Well, here in our text, it says the Bible teaches what's, uh, what's called e election. We talked about it two weeks ago, but let me give you a few scriptures and then we'll move on to the rest of our text. Uh, John 6, 44, it says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up the last day. So scripture teaches that God has elected uh, individuals for his purpose, for his glory, and for his kingdom. Now, when some hear that, they're thinking, well, if God has chosen some, that means he has not chosen others. Uh, apparently, you and God can talk about that when you see him. But the Bible does teach election. The Bible does teach that God has uh, called and, and chosen individuals. Let me give you Ephesians 1. It says, just as he chose us in him before when? The foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Having what? Predestined us to what? Adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the what? Good pleasure of what? His will to the praise of of the glory of his grace in which he made us accepted in the beloved. So if, if you're sitting here today and you are a follower of Jesus, it is literally a complete miracle that you and I are sitting here in church, that you and I are saved, that you and I are going to heaven. It is a literal, complete miracle. Now, some of you are going, well, I'm kind of awesome, so it's not really a miracle. <laughs> I could see why God would choose someone like me. I've got skills. I've got talents. Uh, no, that is the furthest thing from the truth. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He didn't somehow look down on our life and say, ooh, they're going to be awesome here. They're going to be awesome there. They're going to be great here. Ooh, let me choose them now because they're going to be awesome. No, before you and I did anything good or bad, for whatever reason, God said, I want them. Amen to that. I have no, no, no problems at all. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about, what about those who... Uh, you know, who live in some kind of jungle. And we, we talked about this, that the angels are going to preach the glorious gospel. The Bible says that whoever calls upon, the, uh, Romans 10, you'll see it on the screen here. 
It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever. And now whoever, according to, to what we understand, means anybody. So anybody can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. But you and I know there are people who don't want to call on the name of the Lord. There are people who, who hate Jesus. And the crazy thing is, the people that, that hate Jesus, that don't believe God exists, Jesus is the one, according to Colossians, that are keeping their bodies together, keeping their heart pumping. So for somebody to, to say somehow God is unjust, they have not read their scriptures. We can simply ask them, hey, so Jesus wants to give you a great life uh, here and the one to come. He wants to forgive you of your sins. Do you want to receive Jesus? No, I don't believe in all of that. Then they stand before God and say, well, I didn't know. Play the tape. Play, there, there's that one person that came to you, this person came to you, that person came to you. So family, knowing that it, it's God who has, who has chosen, it, it's God has, has chosen us for, for his own purpose, for his own glory. Where then is our boasting? Where then do we have to boast that somehow that we're awesome, somehow that we're great, somehow that, that we're holy, somehow that we're, we're wonderful? Paul says this in Galatians 6. He says, but God forbid that I should boast except in what? The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So there is no room for us to boast about anything because it's only by the grace and the will and pleasure of God that you and I are here today, that you and I responded to the gospel of Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? That no one can come to me unless the Father draw him. Think about this. Then we got to move on. For the pleasure of God himself, he drew you. For his own pleasure, he said, despite you, he says, he says, he says, come here. You and I didn't wake up one morning and say, you know what? I think I'm going to church. I think I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I think I'm going to change everything about my life by following Jesus. Not in a million years. It's God was God that was planting seeds, sending people. Think about this. Think of, think of the scores of people that told you about Jesus before you said yes. Out of the blue, people were talking to you about Jesus. You're like, where is that coming from? That's God the Father saying, keep coming. Keep coming close. I've heard it said this way. For anyone to go to hell, they have to step over the cross. For anyone to go to hell, they have to step over the cross of Christ. So God doesn't send anybody anywhere. This is the decision, a choice that, that, that we make. So when someone rejects Jesus and they come to the end of their life, God's mercy is sending Jesus. God's mercy was in sending Jesus. You want mercy? His name is Jesus Christ. So when someone is coming to the end of life or just in life and you're asking God for mercy, he's like, I've already given it to you. His name is Jesus. I've given you my, my son, Jesus. So, so here in our text, God is going to gather his, uh, his elect, which is a beautiful thing. And it's biblical that God elects. It's biblical that God predestines and for you and I, that just means we should be about this gospel. We should be about telling people about Jesus because God has so many more souls that he desires to save. Well, Jesus ends his Olivet Discourse with two parables that I want to share with you. The first one is a parable about a fig tree. Verse 28 through 31, it says this. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender... And puts forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all of these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. If you're still taking some notes, our next point is read the signs of the times. Read the signs of the times. So Jesus says when the trees begin to show a tender leaves, you know that summer is approaching. Well, what are the other signs 
of the times that Jesus told us about in this chapter. He told us when uh, Jerusalem is surrounded, the appearance of false prophets and false Christ, the abomination of desolation. These are the signs of the times to be aware of. Jesus says when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, it's, it's at the door. Well, verse 30, Jesus says, well, this generation will not pass away. Well, what generation is that? It couldn't be the disciples' generation because they didn't see the rebuilt temple. They didn't see Jerusalem surrounded. So the generation most likely is speaking of the generation who sees all of the things that Jesus mentions in Mark chapter 13. Surrounded by armies, false prophets, false Christ, and the abomination of desolation. Well, listen to verse 26, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. How exciting would that be to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds? Bible commentators and scholars differ a little bit on this, uh, this scripture, but the main point is Jesus is coming back. So you can read the signs of the times and believe what Jesus has said. Listen to verse 31. It says, heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away. What a statement. Heaven and earth are going to pass away, but Jesus said, my, my words, my words will by no means pass away. Uh, those of you ladies who are involved in a Tuesday, uh, Tuesday women's study, you, you're learning about praying the word of God. That if you want to, your, your prayers answered, you, you pray that which is eternal. You pray that which is from Jesus. His word will not pass away. Psalm 138 verse 2, it says, for you have magnified your word above all your name. If I could ask you, family, how are you, how are you in the word this morning. Well, the Bible say that if, if uh, you abide in me and I abide in you, my, my words abide in you, that you will ask what you will. Is, is his words abiding in you? I think Colossians says that uh, the, the word of God should dwell richly in us. It's the word of God that's eternal. And here Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. That's why this is important, family, to know the word of God. You're having a bad day, do you have the word of God in you? Or are you struggling with decisions? Do you have the word of God in you? Are you trying to figure out who you are? Do you have the word of God in you? Because everything is going to change. But this. We should go home now. I mean, that's it right there. Everything is going to change but God's word. Second Peter tells us like this. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines, what? In a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any, what? Private interpretation. So if somebody comes to you and says, God came to me in the middle of the night. I've got this whole new vision. God has a whole nother this and a whole nother that. No scripture is, is of any private interpretation. If somebody says, well, God has showed me and only me, run and run fast. Or if you can't run fast, walk quickly. It says, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but by holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. No private interpretation. Then he closes this with this last parable. It says, but of that day and hour, Jesus says, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowning of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Our last point this morning is are you watching or sleeping? Are you watching or sleeping? Uh, some of you know that I was uh, raised by a single mom, and she was at work, and 
Uh, we knew what time she came home. <laughs> so uh, uh, before uh, she left, she gave us, uh, well, you probably wouldn't understand, but she, she gave us a talking to. And uh, she let us know, well, when I get home, this is what I need to see. And we said, yes, mom. So we were just like, Psh, we got another hour. We got another hour. Just nonsensical kids. Well, my mom messed around and came home early one day. <laughs> Dishes weren't done. Room wasn't done. Didn't uh, change from our, our, our school clothes to our play clothes. Remember that? School clothes and play clothes. You don't go playing outside in your school clothes. You play outside in your play clothes. So, so she came home and she, she didn't find the house. Uh, the way she, she wanted it. So she had a, a come to Jesus meeting. And, and, and we didn't even know Jesus back then, but she, we had a meeting. And uh, we weren't expecting her to, to come home uh, that soon. You see, we, we knew what we should be doing. We knew what we were instructed to do, but we thought we had more time. So she messed around and we heard the key in the door like, we only have a mother, so that's her. We're like, uh-oh, no time to put stuff in the, in, the, in, the, in the oven, the dirty dirty dishes in the oven, no time to, we just, <laughs> welcome. Why, <laughs> why wasn't this done? Well, we thought you were coming later. Here in our text, Jesus says, no one knows when he's coming back. Uh, no one knows. Is that the angels don't know? It says nor that the son. It says but only, but only the father. Uh, if you're taking some notes, you, you might have caught that. Watch the word watch is mentioned four times. Jesus says, watch, 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 watch. And now, now sometimes for us we're like it's just like white noise. Jesus is coming. Yeah, just watch. Yeah, well I've got this going on, this going on, this going on, and and Jesus is saying. But watch, it says, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. Has anybody ever woken up somebody in a, in a deep sleep? Anybody? You're kind of mean about it, right? You're like, hey! You know what they did? They're like this. Right? Because they're in this, this deep sleep. And if, and if you're honest, if, you, if you're sleeping good, you've, you've got a little. If you're sleeping good, your eyes are probably gummed to get, you might have to go like this, right? Because you just, you're just sleeping so good. You're, you're unaware of your surroundings. And now, some of you can sleep anywhere. How many of you can sleep anywhere? In a, in a bus, in a, on a train, <laughs> in a car, in the back seat. Oh, my goodness. You guys are blessed. <laughs> you just close your eyes, and you're just oblivious to, like, everything. People are going, they're sleeping right now. <laughs> People are vacuuming the floor, grandkids are running around and you're just you're just in your lazy boy just sleep you're just out and so you're oblivious to what's going on so you can't watch because you're you're sleeping Jesus is telling his audience and he's telling us that we need to we need to watch we we need to watch and we we need to not only watch but he says take heed it says it says watch watch and pray Jesus, our prayer should be, Jesus, help me to be vigilant. Uh, help me to, to watch and pray and uh, that, 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 I would, that I would live a life that, that's pleasing to you, that, that my life would be spent to, to your glory. Jesus, I, I need you to, to help me to, to watch and pray. And we're going to, uh, when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he tells his disciples, hey, I need you to, I need you to what? I need you to pray with me. Just, just, just sit here and pray. Jesus goes off and He's praying. He comes back, and what are they doing? They're sleeping. Can you imagine that? Jesus tells you, he says, my, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Watch and pray. We got you, Jesus. He goes off, and he prays great drops of blood. He comes back, and they're... <laughs> You're going, didn't I just tell you my soul is exceedingly sorrowful to death? And could you not pray with me just... Just one hour. That's like our human condition, right? Jesus says to, to, to pray and we're, and we're sleeping. And, and you and I are, are encouraged to, to watch and pray. And I wonder, are, are, are you and I, are we, 
are we sleeping? Are we kind of just, just going through this thing called life? And are we, are we really vigilant? Are we, are, are we, are we really uh, watching, uh, watching and praying? If we can say it like this, we should be as vigilant as the lock on our door. What do I mean by that? Uh, tonight, we all go home. Before we go to bed, we're going we're gonna to lock the door. That lock is, is vigilant. That lock says, once you turn me, I, I, I'm set. That if anyone uh, tries to come in in the middle of the night and they don't have access, they are not going to be able to enter. It, it's watching. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I wonder if you and I are doing what we're supposed to do if we're, if we're, we're watching. Now, some people have foolishly set some dates, and you'll see on, on the screen here, I believe it was uh, what, 2011, where um, this one ministry was, was setting dates that, that Jesus <laughs> is going to return. Now, if we all knew that Jesus was coming back on May 21st, we'd have some fun on May 20th, right? We're like, hey, if Jesus is coming back, I've got a few phone calls to make, a few people to tell off. I've got all these things to do. Because we know on the May 21st, we're like, ta-da, I'm now holy. <laughs> May 21st is my day of holiness. Yeah, this, this is nonsense. This is nonsense from Christians, from non-Christians. Uh, no one knows the data. And setting a date, A, it makes you a false prophet. It makes your entire ministry of, for the most part, null and void. You would be called a, a false prophet. So we don't buy into people setting dates. And if I could also uh, talk to you for a few moments about, we're not looking for signs. We're looking for Jesus. Amen. Amen. So there's like blood red moons and you might watch on the news or internet, hey, there, there's a super moon coming and another blood red moon coming, all of these things. Yada, 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 yada. We're looking for Jesus. We're looking for the return of Jesus. Uh, we, we know what's going to happen. We know there's going to be uh, signs in the, in the skies and all of those things. But so we say, okay, there's a blood red moon. There's this. There's a, okay, we're looking for, for Jesus. We're not looking for things. We're looking for Jesus to return. So we don't set dates, but what do you and I do as we, we should be sober and vigilant. But we like our sleep. We like our, our sleep. We like our, our rest. Jesus tells, tells us to be sober and, and be vigilant. I'd say if we are warm and cozy, we're going to fall asleep. But all of you are doing well right now because all of you are awake. But there's times when it gets a little warm in here and maybe pastor's man's voice gets a little, gets a little soothing. And I see some of you. Either you're praying for a really long time, but your head keeps going up and down. So maybe that's a slow Amen. So what's happening is you feel so comfortable. The, the tuck is, is, is nice and comfortable, right? The, the temperature is nice and comfortable. And if we're not careful, we're going to walk through this thing called life in comfort and, and, and not looking. You see, we, we, we read earlier that you and I were saved for the pleasure and purpose of God. Are you living that? All of us are going to die. None of us are getting out of here alive. Thank you for that one person. <laughs> They're like, well, pastor man, I'm different. No, you are not. <laughs> so knowing this, knowing that God saved you and I for a purpose, for his pleasure and his glory, are you and I about his business? Or are we, are we sleeping? If you're sleeping, I want to tell you, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> We need, to, we, amen, we, need, we need to get to work about the, the, this gospel. We, we need to tell people about, about Jesus. Because if not family, you and I could say, hey, well, I'm, I'm saved and I'm good. Well, Jesus didn't save you and I just to come and sit in a church. Amen. You and I aren't saved just to be, you know, in God's trophy case. No, we're saved to tell other people about, about Jesus. But if we're, if we're sleeping... We're like, hey, you know, hey, I'm good. I've got my fire insurance. Everything is well. You know what? No, there, we need to be about this glorious, glorious gospel. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. We'll get there in a few, in a month or two. It says, and Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to, to every creature. 
you and I are to, are to go and, and, and tell people ab about Jesus. Now, you might say, well, pastor, man, I'm a little shy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If you've ever been to a, a sporting event, you know how us guys are. We're chest bumping complete strangers. We're high-fiving. Us guys can get together and talk about stats and this and that, and you ladies can talk about this and that. But when it comes to the gospel, I'm scared. We can't chest bump, high five, complete strangers, and not tell them about, about Jesus. The greatest thing that will ever happen to you is Jesus. Less greater things happen to us, and we're on Facebook <laughs> writing paragraphs about your nail polish. Maybe about a new something, something. But then when it comes to Jesus, help us to be about this, this gospel. Help us. To, there, there's a time coming to this planet that is going to be horrific. And until then, we need to tell people about Jesus. I want to encourage all of you. Um, we have an evangelism team that, go, that goes out on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday evenings. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's non-confrontational. They go to um, um, houses in, uh, uh, in our area and just, it's non-confrontational. It's talking about Jesus. And what's beautiful is that people have been saying yes to, to receive Jesus as their Savior. And, and how wonderful is that somebody just needs somebody to tell them about Jesus. They go, you and I are here because somebody told us about Jesus. So why wouldn't you turn around and do, and do the same 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When, family? I love that. In a moment, the Bible says, in a, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. When is that going to happen? We don't know, but I'm looking forward to Jesus changing all of this and just a, a twinkling of an eye. But until then, that you and I would, would watch and be ready, that you and I would, would just tell people about this wonderful, wonderful Savior that we have in Jesus Christ. How exciting. Let me give you three things to take home with you. The first one is, how are you actively watching for Jesus. How are you actively watching for Jesus? Then secondly, what place or priority does the word of God have in your life? What place or priority does the word of God have in your life? And then what are the evidences of your answer? And then thirdly and lastly, uh, take the day and think of what it means for God to have chosen you despite you, but chosen for his glory, his purpose, and his pleasure. Make a list. Make a list. Walk with that today. You are, we are, have been chosen by God, not because we're sinless, not because we're, we're full of faith, not because we're obedient for his glory and his purpose alone, he's chosen us. That's why none of us should, be, none of us should ever walk around going, I don't, I don't feel loved by God. If you say things like that, that's because you've not read his scripture. Jeremiah 31, uh, 31, 3, it says, it says I, have, I have loved you with an ever, everlasting love and with loving kindness, I have drawn you. That's 31. Yep, 31, 3. Yep. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have, I have drawn you with. It's God who has loved us. And the word everlasting means like ever, right? It doesn't mean like that, that God has like somehow began to love us. He didn't, start, he didn't see us being good. He says, well, you know what? I'm going to love you now. I see you're being good. No, it says that from everlasting, that he's at this everlasting love love for us. So this week, chew on things like that, that God's love for me, think about this, 
has always been. God's love for me has always been. God's love for me never began. It's just always been. That's why as, as a follower of Jesus, we should walk around going, why are you smiling? Your life's falling apart. Your body's falling apart. Someone's loved me with an everlasting love. That's why I'm smiling. Body hurts, back hurts, knee hurts, hips hurt, feet hurt. But I'm loved with an everlasting love. And what did we learn today? That heaven and earth are going to pass away, but what? His words will never pass away. I hope you know, family, that, that you're not only loved, you are so loved. God doesn't love you because you're awesome. Simply because of who he is, he has set his love upon you. So may you leave this place going, I'll know what's going to happen today, but what I do know, which will never change, is that I am loved eternally by God. Stinking sinner, but loved eternally by God. Mistake after mistake, rebellion after rebellion, I'm loved by God despite all of my failures. Jesus is coming, and may you and I, may we be awake. May we, may we be awake and vigilant. May, may Jesus knock on our door and been waiting for you. Amen. Been waiting for you. We've been watching. We've been waiting. Not for these things, but we've been waiting. We've been waiting for you. Family, I hope you've been waiting for Jesus. I hope you're looking for Jesus. I hope you're ready. Now, let's go. Let's go, Jesus. Father in heaven, we, we need your help to, to awaken us from our slumber. We have all of these. Uh, sometimes, Father, our plans supersede you. We have this plan to do this and this and this. And then it's you. We, we don't always have you in your rightful place or priority. I would say we're, we're sometimes sleeping, as, as you know. We need you to, to refocus us, to help us and to guide us, that we would be awake, that we would be awake and, and looking for, for your coming, that we that we would be so filled with your word, so filled with your spirit that when we, when we leave here and go out to eat, that the, 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 the waiter or waitress can say, you, why are you guys all joyful? And we tell them, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. That, that wherever we go, that we would just have this aroma of Christ on us. So, Jesus, you know what I'm trying to say. Help us. Help us to walk worthy of, of our calling. That You didn't just call us to that we would just come to a church and, and call it a day. No, you saved us for so much more. Help us to stop looking to ourselves for our resources. Help us to look, look to you. So, so, Father, I'm praying just for a, a, a new filling of your Holy Spirit, that you would help us to break up that follow ground, that you would help us to, to arise from our slumber. Jesus, that we would be lovers of your word and, and, and prayer, that we would begin to, to, to pray your, your word and scripture over our situations. Oh, Jesus, come and do a great work. We're thirsty and hungry for you. And if you're, if you're here today and someone brought you here and you're, you're not a follower of Jesus, you, you've heard today of how difficult things will continually become in our, in our world. But you've also heard today that there is a Savior that wants to save you, not because you're great or wonderful, but because he has a plan and a purpose for your life. That one day you're going to stand before God, and if you're standing before God in your own sin, in your own righteousness, God is going to say, away from me, you workers of unrighteousness. And you're going to spend an eternity in a place called hell, not created for you. It was created for Satan and his angels, but you can't spend all eternity with God if you don't have your sins forgiven. So I just want to encourage you. I want to invite you into a relationship 
with Jesus. Not to become religious, not to join this church, but to to have a relationship with your creator. And if you desire a relationship, if if God has been drawing you, maybe for this moment right now, I want to tell you his name is Jesus and we need to have a simple prayer together. And if you desire to have hope, peace, joy, and a future found in Jesus, I want to lead you in a small, simple prayer. It's The prayer is easy. The living part is tough. But Father in heaven, forgive me a sinner. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross for my sins and you rose again for me the third day. Jesus, I want to follow you as my Lord. I'm calling out to you to save me. Fill me with this love and this hope and this peace and this joy found in you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer, hallelujah. If you're online, click the link that said I just gave my life to Jesus. I'd love to contact you. And if you said that prayer in here, I'd love to to pray with you outside or you're outside. I'd love to meet you. Thank you, Jesus, for being so wonderful. Come, Lord Jesus. Bless my brothers and bless my sisters today. We ask these things in Jesus' name. The church said amen and amen.